So now we're going to talk about how to combine two statements in interval notation to make a more efficient statement. I will tell you when you're doing interval notation, your answer should never have an AND symbol. Because if it's an AND symbol, it can always be written more efficiently. With the OR symbol, sometimes it can, sometimes it can't. It all depends. If there's a hole or a gap in the graph, then you can't write it more efficiently. But if there's no holes or no gaps, then it needs to be able to be written in one step, in one statement. So what, we, what I gave you is negative infinity to 5, union with 3 to infinity. We're going to start with this one. These are two separate problems. And I want you to combine these in order to make one statement. What messes with a lot of people on this is they just see random numbers. And so what I want you to think about instead of random numbers is I want to be able to present it visually to you. I want you to be able to see it as a picture. So we're going to start by talking about what each set of numbers means. So we're going to start about the first set, negative infinity comma 5. What this means is it's every number from negative infinity forever and ever, all negative numbers ever. All decimals going on and on and on and on and on. Just going all the way until you get to 5. So if I were to put this on a graph, I'm starting at negative infinity. Going on forever and ever and ever and ever. I have an arrow showing that I'm going to keep going. And on this graph, I need the number 5, and I'm going to go ahead and put my number 3. That way I have my order. And this first statement is going to go all the way until it gets to 5. And if you've seen my other videos that use interval notation, the parentheses are the same symbol you're going to put on the 5. That means it doesn't equal to it. If it was equal to it, it would have used a bracket. But the parentheses, they're just going to fall onto the number. Okay. So that's the first set. The second set is 3 to infinity. So I'm going to graph that one right below it. That way I can compare the two sets of per the two sets that we have. So this is all the numbers from 3 all the way to positive infinity. So all of your numbers are going on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So from 3 we are going to go and to show infinity, we put arrows because that says it keeps going and it's not going to stop. Again, the symbol on 3 is parentheses, so we are going to put parentheses on 3. So blue, we have negative infinity all the way to 5. And in brown, we have 3 all the way to infinity. The next thing we need to do is we're trying to combine these into one statement. At this point in the picture, I don't have enough information. So what I need to do is I need to or figure out what this symbol means. It's a little U. Sometimes they will write the word OR. The union symbol is an OR word, is its corresponding word. What that means is it can be either in blue graph or in the brown graph. As long as the number is in one or the other graphs, it needs to be included in our final answer. So there's three different portions to this graph. We have less than three, we have between three and five, and we have greater than five. So if we look at this section over here, less than three, do I have either the blue or the brown? I have blue. So that's going to be included in my final answer. My final answer is going to have this piece. So I'm just going to take the blue and copy it over in green. If I look at between 3 and 5, do I have either blue or brown? Yes, I have both of them. So my shading is going to continue on and include the center piece as well. Then I'm going to look at the last piece, from 5 to infinity. Is that either blue or brown? It's brown. So it is going to be included as well. Because this is an OR statement and they are overlapping, it's going to go from negative to positive infinity. If they weren't overlapping and they were going in that direction instead with a hole in the middle, then it would have been as efficient as it could have been. But since they do overlap and it's an OR statement, your answer is the green. The smallest number green will ever hit is negative infinity. Because it's got an arrow, it keeps going forever and ever. 
Then in the middle, there's no place where there's not shading. So it's going to keep on going until it gets to the other arrow that's positive infinity. And you're going to close the parentheses. Infinities will always use parentheses. You should never put a bracket on infinity. Because I cannot enclose infinity. I cannot equal infinity. Because infinity never stops. Okay? So that's the or statement. We're going to do the exact same problem, but instead of an or, we're going to do an and. So we're going to start with our graph. Again, visually helps a lot of people. We have threes and we have five. We start with negative infinity to five. That's going to start at negative infinity. So you can go all the way until you get to five. Because five has a parenthesis, you're going to put a parenthesis on five. Then we're going to do our second statement, three to infinity. So we're starting at three with a bracket, or with a parenthesis, I apologize. And it's going to go all the way to positive infinity. The difference, because they start off the exact same, the difference is the symbol in the middle. Sometimes they will put the word and. Instead of the symbol, just depends on which class we're in. I teach some classes with symbols and some classes with the words. What the and means is the and means we only want where the two graphs are overlapping. So if they're not overlapping, that doesn't need to be a part of my final answer. So if I look at the part less than three, do I have both graphs? No, I only have blue. I need both graphs in order for it to go into my final answer. If I look at the middle part, I have blue and I have orange, so that middle part is part of my answer. And if I look at the far part above the five, I don't have blue, so that can't be part of my answer. So since I have this middle part, I'm going to use the same symbols that they gave me for those numbers. So on the three, I'm going to use parentheses because there was a parentheses on the three. And on the five, again, I'm going to use parentheses because there was a parentheses there originally. Now the green is my answer. Blue and brown, that's just my work. The green is my answer. So I have parentheses is the first thing that appears as I look left to right. Then there's my shading, the parentheses was at three. My shading stops at five and it ends with a set of parentheses. So that is my answer. One for the or, one for the and. Remember or is anything that is shaded at least once. An and is anything where they're overlapping and they're both shading. And it has to be both. Or it could be one, it could be two, but it has to be at least something. There's no shading, it's not going to work. Okay. So let me change the problems really quick. I want to try a different scenario and show you how, this, how else this could appear. So we are going to do negative infinity to 3 union with negative infinity to 5. Again, very similar, but I've just changed it up a little bit. So notice here we don't have any positive infinities. Your, your interval notation should always be smallest to largest, so you should never have a positive infinity at the front. You should never have a negative infinity at the back. It should always go small to large. We have both of them coming from negative infinity. So that tells us there's at least a little bit of overlap. So if I look at this graph, and I'm going to take it and graph each piece, negative infinity to 3. 3 and 5. That is going to go from negative infinity, what's your arrow? And it's going to go all the way until I get to 3. At 3, it's going to stop with parentheses because that's the one that was given to us in our original problem. If they would given us brackets, we would have put brackets. The second graph, negative infinity to 5. I'm going to graph that completely separately. Starting at negative infinity, I have my arrow. And it is going to go all the way until you get to 5. At 5, you're going to have parentheses. Because there's parentheses on the 5. And then we need to identify our connector. Our connector is a union. That's an OR statement. 
or means at least one place needs to be shaded. One or two, but it can't be empty. So if I look at less than three, I have two graphs shaded. So that means it's allowed to be part of my answer because there's at least one of them. Then if I look at the center, three to five, I have at least one graph. So that's part of my answer. It's going to continue on. If I look at greater than five, I have no graphs, no brown, no blue. So it cannot be part of my answer. So on five, that's where my shading stopped. I'm going to use the symbol that was on five. So the parentheses. So if you look at green, it starts with an arrow towards the negatives. So that's negative infinity. Always use parentheses on infinities. Comma is going to keep going until it gets to 5. And then on 5, there is a parentheses. That's your interval notation for the union. Okay, so I combined the two statements. It took the longer one. If we did the opposite, negative infinity to 3, intersected with negative infinity to 5. So that's going to be the same base graph. For negative infinity to 3, it starts with your arrow and it goes until you get to 3. For negative infinity to 5, it starts with your arrow and it goes until you get to 5. The difference in these two problems is your connector. Here we had an or. This one we have an and. So since we have an and, that means we only want where the two graphs are overlapping. So if we look at the first part, less than three, do I have both graphs? Yes, that is part of my answer. You look at the center, do I have both graphs? I need blue and green. Brown. I don't have both, I only have one. And if I look at greater than five, do I have blue and brown? I don't have either. So your shading starts with negative infinity. Why did you an arrow? Negative infinity. Parentheses always. It ends at three. And on three, we had a blue set of parentheses. We are going to keep that parentheses. That is your interval notation for the simplified statement. So all of these statements, I was allowed to, I was able to simplify into just one statement. We want the most efficient way to write it. Again, when you're asked to do this, make it visually, make it something you can see. If you're taking an online class, be sure you're still writing things down. Don't try to just do it all in your head. You're not alone in these classes. You're not expected to be a crazy mathematician. You're allowed to use pencil and paper. Write things down, just like if you were in a normal class. Take each statement, graph it individually, and then find the connector, what it means. 